See how we can generate a sinusoid. So imagine what I'm showing over here is, is a disk, something like this, which is rotating in this direction, so anti-clockwise. And we paint a small dot like that, and we let it rotate in that direction. And so what I want you to focus on is what happens when the dot is over here. And so when the dot is over here, uh, and let's say this angle over here is theta, then uh, and, and let's say that this uh, radius is equal to 1, it's a unit radius, then we know that the vertical angle is going to be sine theta, and this part down here is cos theta, as I've shown over here. So uh, cos theta is fine, that makes sense, that's uh, essentially a number like so. Uh, and I want to introduce a symbol called j, and j means uh, go in the y direction. So uh, if you don't have j, it's along this direction, in the x direction, but uh, this one, j means go in the y direction. And so if I write, if I say over here cos theta plus j sine theta, that means go cos theta in this direction until here, and then go in that direction by j sine theta, and so cos theta plus j sine theta means this vector over here. And as you can see, this vector, when you project it down over here on this axis, gives you cos theta. So um, in other words, if I were to just say j means go in this direction and I sort of ignore it for now, and if I just look at the cos theta component of this, uh, of this vector, then this vector, which is a constant length vector over here, which just happens to be rotating round and round like this, is causing me to create on this axis a sinusoid, which at zero has the value one, at value at pi by two, it has the value zero, because it's, it's, it's on the axis, and then when it goes to pi, it goes to minus one, and then when it goes to 1.5 pi, 3 by 2 pi, it goes to zero again and back over here. So in other words, it has just the shape you're looking for, which is this sort of, this shape over here, and over here is capital T. So if I arrange things so that it, the vector reaches this value here at time t, then in fact, the projection of the vector on the x-axis will be the sinusoid I'm looking for, which is, cos 2 pi small t over t. So uh, this raises the question, it's not particularly difficult to see that uh, j means go up in this direction. So j can be viewed as rotate 90 degrees. So if I take a vector like this and I apply j to it, so let's say this is a vector 2 and I rotate it 90 degrees, which means apply j to it becomes a vertical vector like 2j. And if I rotate it again like this, it becomes something like this. It is minus 2. So j square is equal to minus 1, which means j can be viewed as being square root of minus 1. So that's a sort of a weird thing to, to say, but actually it's not that complicated at all. All it's saying is that if I apply j twice, I square it, then I'm going to be, it's as if I am flipping the vector over from the positive to the negative direction. And so that's one way of understanding what we mean by a, a, uh, uh, the operator j. So j is the uh, nothing more than a rotate 90 operator. It also can be viewed as the imaginary operator because we often call this the imaginary axis. Okay, so I think that's uh, some kind of intuition about why uh, we can study uh, sinusoids by looking at uh, by looking at this quantity j, and how we can generate sinusoids from a rotating wheel.